Hello, welcome to the seventh lecture on advanced mechanics. Today we're going to talk about 2D elasticity, but this time cylindrical coordinates. Learning objectives are drive the 2D plane as stress strain equation in cylindrical coordinates. Be able to simplify these equations for problems with axisymmetry stress and displacements. And solve 2D plane stress strain problems in cylindrical coordinates using area stress function. You're going to use uh, a lot what you've learned in the previous lecture on using um, area stress function and 2D plane stress strain in Cartesian coordinates in this lecture. Let's begin. The first part is cylindrical coordinates itself. Here is a review of uh, what we learned in the previous lecture. Here you see the plane stress case where sigma zz is zero. The, uh, the stress perpendicular to the uh, plate plane is zero. And here you see the plane strain case. It's a long prismatic element with a loading perpendicular to the main axis because of the long uh, length we can assume that there is no axial uh, strain so basically if we cut a, a thin plate out of this uh, long element we can assume that epsilon zz is zero but pay attention that it doesn't mean that sigma zz is zero because of Poisson's ra uh, ratio and Poisson's effect, we get a stress along uh, perpendicular to the plate plane, which is in this case aligned with the body axis. Here are a few um, motivations, biological motivations for learning cylindrical coordinates uh, to the elasticity. Uh, you remember in the previous lecture, we talked about uh, blood vessels. They're uh, long uh, cylindrical elements. And due to um, the long length, we can assume there is no axial strain there. So if we uh, cut a thin plate um, out of this blood vessel, we can assume that there is no uh, strain perpendicular to the uh, plane surface. And that's basically the case of plane strain. We can even uh, model uh, uh, ventricles of uh, heart with that. And also airways, uh, basically any long duct or tube in our body, uh, which undergoes um, a radial pressure from inside and outside can be assumed as a cylindrical um, 2D uh, plane strain case. Okay, let's start with uh, cylindrical coordinates uh, geometric relations. We already know, know that x is r cosine of theta, y uh, is r sine of theta, and for r we have um, a square root of x squared plus y squared. For theta, we have um, arc tangent of y divided by x. Look at the picture here. You see the Cartesian coordinates x, y with z uh, perpendicular to the circle plane. And you see uh, the cylindrical coordinates. Uh, the first dimension is r along radius. The second dimension is theta. Uh, which is the uh, which is tangent to uh, the um, circle, and the third dimension is the same as uh, the third dimension in Cartesian coordinates. It's z. Our task here is uh, to find partial derivatives with respect to Cartesian directions x and y, but with respect to r and theta. Uh, to basically be able to transform uh, what we've learned uh, about to the elasticity in Cartesian coordinates with these derivatives to cylindrical coordinates. Um, 
but basically we want to find partial partial x as a function of r and theta and the same for partial partial y as a function of um, r and theta let's see how uh, let's start with partial partial x we can write that as partial partial r partial r partial x plus partial partial theta partial theta uh, partial x uh, what we need to find is partial r partial x and partial theta partial x okay um, from this relation we approach to find partial r partial x and we basically get 2x multiply by 1 over 1 over 2x square y square square root um, we can basically cancel the twos and also we know that this is basically r so it is equal to x divided by r but we know that x is r cosine of theta so it cancels both r and we end up with cosine of theta for partial theta partial x we're going to use this relation and we end up with partial theta partial x equal to minus y divided by x square that's the partial derivative of x divided by y uh, y divided by x with respect to x multiply by the part uh, the derivative of um, tangent inverse which is basically one divided by one plus y divided by x square okay um, well it is basically equal to minus y divided by x square x square x square plus y square and these cancel each other out we know this one is uh, r square and as a result we have minus y divided by r square but y itself is r sine of theta divided by r square don't forget the minus and square power and r itself cancel each other and we end up with minus sine of we end up with minus sine of theta divided by r okay uh, now just pay attention that this is uh, just substituting these two back to our partial partial x derivative and it is equal to 
partial partial r cosine of theta plus partial partial theta minus sine of theta divided by r which is the same as this one okay that's the first relation now uh, let's uh, do the second uh, relation for partial with respect to partial y uh, we're gonna have partial partial y equal to partial partial r partial r partial y plus partial partial theta partial theta partial y okay um, again we're gonna try finding partial r partial uh, y from this equation we're gonna have partial r partial y equal to um, again 2y multiplied by 1 over 2x square y square square root okay twos cancel each other you know this is r so it is equal to y divided by r and we know that y is r sine of theta and again divided by r r's cancel each other and we end up with sine of theta for partial theta partial y again we use theta relation and we end up with partial theta partial y is equal to 1 divided by x that's the derivative of y divided by x with respect to y multiply by tangent inverse derivative which becomes 1 divided by 1 plus y divided by x square uh, it is basically equal to 1 divided by x multiply by x square divided by 1 by, divided by x square plus y square um, x and x square uh, the power in x square cancel it, each other out and for x um, square plus y square we know that's r square so we end up with x divided by r square but we know that x is r cosine of theta divided by r square so the square power and r cancel each other out and we end up with cosine of theta divided by r here <coughs> okay um, just substituting these two in our original relation we get partial partial y equal to partial partial r sine of theta plus partial partial theta cosine of theta divided by r which is basically the second relation that we have okay now that we have we know uh, partial derivatives in cylindrical coordinates um, let's uh, do the transformation of a stress tensor the stress component in cylindrical coordinates are written as functions of the stress components in cartesian coordinates using a rotation transformation from the cartesian to cylindrical coordinates just see that x and y axis for the cartesian coordinates if we rotate them around uh, z we end up uh, with a coordinate system aligned with r and uh, the second axis tangent uh, to the circle so that's basically what we uh, should do 
and we already know that uh, rotation of a stress uh, is handled by alpha sigma alpha transpose where alpha is the rotation uh, tensor and since we have a theta rotation around z axis uh, er, around the third axis in Cartesian coordinates, the rotation uh, matrix is cosine of theta, sine of theta zero, minus sine of theta, cosine of theta zero, and zero, zero, one, to basically take the, uh, a fra the original frame to the rotated frame. Okay, so we simply um, substitute alpha in um, our relation in either the uh, vector format or index format. And we end up with these um, three relations for sigma rr, sigma theta theta, and sigma r theta as a function, uh, as functions of uh, sigma xx, sigma yy, and sigma xy. We call sigma rr radial stress, and sigma theta theta circumferential stress. Sigma zz remains the same because basically the rotation around the axis doesn't affect um, sigma zz and sigma rz and sigma th uh, theta z are zero because um, it was a 2D planar strain case in Cartesian coordinates. If I uh, write a bit more details, it was basically like this. Sigma RR, Sigma Theta Theta, uh, Sigma R, so let me write it here. We had basically Sigma RR, Sigma R Theta, Sigma RZ, Sigma uh, R theta again because it's symmetric sigma theta theta sigma theta z uh, sigma r z sigma theta z sigma z z is equal to cosine of theta sine of theta zero minus sine of theta cosine of theta 0, 0, 0, 1, multiply by sigma x, x, sigma x, y, sigma x, z, sigma x, y, sigma y, y, sigma y, z, sigma x, z, sigma uh, y, z, sigma z, z, multiply by cosine of theta minus sine of theta zero sine of theta cosine of theta zero 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 one pay attention this is sigma prime in the rotated frame which is our cylindrical coordinate this is alpha and this is sigma in Cartesian coordinates, and this is alpha transpose. Also, note that we knew that this is zero, this one is zero as well, the same for the symmetric parts. So it basically resulted in sigma rz and sigma theta z become zero as well. And also because of the element here in the rotation matrix being one, we end up with sigma zz being equal at the end. 